Good evening and welcome to the Christmas Eve service here at Kings Highway Christian Church. What a ble pleasure it is to be gathered here, uh, ready uh, to come together as one people of faith to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, as the minister, I am not supposed to be partial in any way here in the church, but I have to admit I have a special affection to all of you here for whom a 6 o'clock Christmas Eve service just will not do. You have to come at 11, and I feel the same way. There's no place I would rather be at 11 o'clock on Christmas Eve than gathered here with you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, for this time of worship and celebration. Well, let us begin this time together by standing together as we are able and singing, O Come All Ye Faithful, verses 1, 2, and 4. surrounds us. God looks upon us with love. God is ready to hear us when we call. Therefore, let us bow now in prayer. Father, it is in quietness now that we offer ourselves to you. Help us here and now to open our hearts in worship and in honest prayer this evening. Lord, give us the gift of gratitude as we remember Christmas's past and as we give thanks for them. We remember now and give thanks to you for all those whose lives have touched our own at Christmas time. We thank you for parents and grandparents, brothers and sisters, all whom we have loved and who have given us far more love than we have often deserved. Hear now our silent prayer of thanksgiving for our family.
Father, there are so many others who have entered into our lives and who have given us joy. We remember now and give thanks for the golden friends of the past, for memories of Christmas nights gone by, for echoes of laughter and joy that still ring in our hearts. For all of this, hear now our silent prayer of thanks. Father, in our plenty, we forget those whose lives wither and die because they do not have enough to eat. We forget those refugees who have no homes. We forget what real misfortune, real hunger, real misery is like. Then grant us, Lord, an imagination so that we might have compassion and understanding for those who are suffering. I think God, grant us that now as we pray for those in need in our silence. Now we dedicate this time to you, dear Lord. Let this night be tender with hope. Let our lives be radiant with reflected love. We pray in the name of him who brought light to darkness, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, let us hear now from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us. A son has been given to us, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
The wood that was used to make Christ's manger, the manger in which the baby Jesus was laid, would have other uses as well. Years later, other hands would take other wood, and it would be a cross that they would make. And it would be on that cross that Jesus would die. But the miracle of God's love that had its birth in Bethlehem would not end with Jesus' death on the cross. Through God's grace and through Christ's resurrection, it shines down on us today. These symbols of bread and cup are emblems of this great love and this mighty sacrifice made for each of us. And let us prepare now to receive these as one community of faith by bowing in prayer. Loving God, we do give thanks for this bread and this cup. Lord, we will be eating all sorts of good things here in these days to come. So many treats, so many meals with uh, those that we love, friends and family. Loving God, through all of it and above all of it, help us to keep this, this tiny morsel of bread, this little bit of juice these great remembrances of your love. Bless these elements, Lord, to our nourishment, the nourishment of our bodies and the nourishment of our spirits. May they be powerful reminders to us of the true great meaning of Christmas. And then may these elements, as we receive them here, fill our hearts with love. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, it was on the night that Jesus was betrayed that he took the bread when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. My friends, all followers of Christ are invited to join us now in receiving this bread and cup. You will do so by coming forward as directed by our deacons, uh, receiving a little, taking off a little piece of this bread, dipping it in the juice and receiving it in that way. Let us come together now and enjoy this meal with one another.
first gospel reading this evening comes from the gospel of Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 20. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this was the first tax being made while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, who was great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, that the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. When they had seen it, they made known abroad all the sayings which was told to them concerning this child. And all that heard it wondered at those things which they were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all of these things, and she pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen that the Lord had made known to them. Friends, let us turn to hymn number 162. Remain seated as we sing together, What Child Is This?
Our second gospel reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through, tw 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he called together all of the chief pre the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, Where is the Christ to be born? And they said, In Bethlehem of Judea. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. And as soon as you find him, Send word to me so that I may come and worship him too. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and they followed the star that they had seen in the east until it stopped over a place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down to worship him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Let us now turn to hymn number 151 and sing together the first Noel verses 1, 4, and 5. Thing I think about as I reflect back on all of those 
close Christmas, this project, particularly the ones long, long ago, is how much has changed about Christmas. My responsibilities for Christmas are quite different uh, this year as a minister and as a father and husband than they were uh, 40 years ago as a child. And of course the people have changed. Uh, it used to be that the number one uh, prime players in my Christmas were my parents and my brothers and sister, and now it is my wife and my son and my daughter. But through all of these Christmases, through everyone, there has been someone who has always, always been there for me at Christmas time. And no, it is not Jesus, though Jesus has been there for me at Christmas time. It is someone actually who has quite a few problems. And the problems that he faces have helped to remind me of Jesus and have helped to remind me of the true meaning of Christmas. And this person that has been with me through all of my Christmases is Charlie Brown and the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Yes, it's uh, I, I've celebrated this will be my 49th Christmas. Charlie Brown, this is Charlie Brown's 51st Christmas. It was December 9th, 1965 that the very first Charlie Brown special aired. And if you are a connoisseur of old TV, as I am, you may be interested to know that they took off that night an episode of The Munsters so that they could put Charlie Brown on. And if you were gonna watch it, then you might have watched right before it, Gilligan's Island. You can watch Gilligan's Island, then you can watch the Charlie, very first Charlie Brown Christmas. And one interesting fact about this uh, episode that really has had an impact, uh, impact on me throughout my life is uh, the executives were not happy with it. They had viewed it before it aired, and they were certain it was going to be a big uh, flop. Nobody was going to like it. They had a lot of issues I'll talk about in a moment, but they were certain nobody was going to tune in. They couldn't have been more wrong. They couldn't have been more wrong. Had, everybody knew about the peanuts from uh, the newspaper, and uh, everyone was apparently a lot of people were interested in seeing what an animated version of Charlie Brown was like because half of the televisions in the United States were tuned in to Charlie Brown uh, December 9, 1965, when it first aired. And of course, it has aired every Christmas, 51 now Christmases. It has aired at least once, usually more than once in recent years. Uh, it's extremely popular. There's so much about it that's popular. Uh, the one thing, reason I think that we relate to it, and one reason certainly that it has been a part of my Christmas, an important part, for so many years, is that in this special, Charlie Brown faces a lot of the same difficulties at Christmas time that we face, that I face. Charlie Brown has a lot of the same questions that we have during Christmas. He makes a lot of the same mistakes that we make. Now, I hope I don't have to ask if you've seen this. Surely it's been on for 51 years. If you haven't caught it at least once, maybe you should try to do that next year. I'm sure most of you have seen it, and so you know well the predicament that Charlie Brown finds himself in is he has lost the true meaning of Christmas. And quite quickly in the show, it starts showing him going through a number of uh, different activities, trying to learn once again the meaning of Christmas. He begins by asking other people what they think. What do you think the meaning of Christmas is? It tries to get other people's thoughts about what they think about Christmas. He goes on to get a little counseling from, from Lucy. Uh, he decides he's going to, oh, he's going to get busy. He needs a Christmas activity. And so he becomes director of the play. And finally, that doesn't work. And so he decides, oh, well, what's the one thing that surely to give us meaning in Christmas time? Well, it's to buy something. So the, the, toward the end, he goes out to buy the perfect Christmas tree, and none of this works. None of it works. Trying to understand Christmas by understanding what his friends think, trying to get the counseling about Christmas, trying to stay busy, trying to buy something and make the meaning of Christmas come through in that way, the perfect gift that we often try to seek out during Christmas for those that we love. None of it worked, and finally, Charlie Brown yells out in frustration, can't someone tell me what Christmas is all about? And his, course, his little friend Linus takes the stand, comes up on the stage, gets in front of the mic, and doesn't give his thoughts on Christmas, doesn't give a lecture about Christmas, doesn't preach a sermon about Christmas. He reads seven of those verses I just read a moment ago uh, from the Gospel of Luke. The story of shepherds and angels, and the baby born in Bethlehem, 
wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. The story of God's great love for us. The story that shows how much God loves us all and how much God loves each one of us separately, especially uniquely. And when Linus is finished, he says, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Well, there are a lot of things apparently the TV executives did not like about this show. And they are, well, the things that most of us love about the show is that they didn't like the fact that they used children as actors. They wanted adults to play the children. Uh, in the, the voiceovers for the children in the animated show. Um, and of course, that's one of the charming things is the children acting and giving their voice uh, to that show. Another thing they didn't like was the music. They didn't like this jazzy Christmas music by Ben Scaraldi, and of course, that has gone on to be uh, one of the number one Christmas albums in the world is Ben Scaraldi's uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas. But if they could change anything, the one thing they did try to change uh, with the creator, with Charles Schultz, was that reading from the King James Bible at the end of the show. Well, they were certain that the people would be bored when hearing that, and they would turn away. They could just see it, the channels flipping away to other rival networks as this character in this show starts reading seven verses out of the old King James Bible, and they begged Charles Schultz to take it out, and they would have taken it out if they had had creative control, but Charles Schultz had control, and he absolutely refused. He said, if Charlie Brown and Linus cannot honestly say the true meaning of Christmas on national TV, then nobody will ever be able to. He stuck to his guns, and I am grateful that he did. I am grateful to uh, Charlie Brown and Snoopy and Linus, and I'm great, grateful to Charles Schultz. I'm grateful that for the last 51 years, they have been there to remind me. Each year, it is strange how I always seem to come upon it when it is playing, even when I don't look for it. And there it is, reminding me once again through these seven verses from the Gospel of Luke, the true meaning of Christmas. It's so easy for us to be thrown off at this time of the year, to forget what this time is all about. And so I pray that for you, that each one of you here has something or someone or some place that reminds you of the true meaning of Christmas, that fills your heart with God's love. Maybe it's a special decoration you hang on the tree every year. Maybe it's a special nativity scene that someone you love gave to you. Maybe it's a family tradition that you have or a special place that you go. Or maybe it's right here. Maybe it's this Christmas Eve service or a service like this service somewhere else. And that is what reminds you of the true meaning of Christmas each year. Whatever it is, I hope that it helps you to experience here and now and in these sacred days to come the sweetness and the joy and the wonder of this incredible message that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have eternal life. Because after all, that is what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Let us bow in prayer. Loving God, thank you for the beautiful trappings of Christmas, for the wonderful extras, the decoration, and the food. The chance to have time with people we care about. Thank you most of all, Lord, for the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. For the love that he demonstrated to us. Your love that he showed us, that he spoke to us of and taught us about. It is love that was finally shown perfectly in his great sacrifice on the cross. Loving God, thank you for his wondrous and miraculous birth. 
Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, let's join together in singing hymn number 144, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Gospel of John, we hear these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What came into being in Him was life, and the light was the light of all people, and the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness can never overcome it.
quietly, as though the snow fell to earth with holy light, may the radiant spirit come to dwell upon your heart tonight. Tenderly, as mothers smile upon their children soft and sleep, may he fold you in his love and rapture calm and deep. Silently, as flowers bloom, may your spirit rise and sing, knowing one who makes your heart a blessed avalanche of spring. Even now, as we prepare to extinguish our candles, may the light that is in our hearts burn ever brighter. And may we take that light now into a world which needs its warmth. Let us go now with God. Let us go now in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>